Hey everybody, welcome to the Apple Watch User Guide and Tutorial. This is part 3 of 4, where we go over Apple Watch Control Center and explore the Apple Watch's settings to help you personalize your watch to make it better fit your needs. Stay tuned to the end of the video to learn more about what we cover in the other parts. Now let's get to it! Just like your iPhone, the Apple Watch has a control center as well. You can access the Apple Watch's control center from the main watch face by swiping up. To close control center at any time, just swipe down. But with just one swipe up, you can check your battery status as well as various settings, you can connect to a Bluetooth speaker or headphones, silence your Apple Watch, and more. So let's go over each option in control center, starting with the battery percentage. At a glance, this tells you the battery charge on your Apple Watch. If you tap it, you can get even more detail and the option to activate power reserve, which is kind of like the low power mode on your iPhone. And if you use AirPods and they are connected to your Apple Watch or iPhone, you can even see their battery level. If you have an Apple Watch Series 3 with cellular, you'll have two additional options the rest of us don't have. Cellular and Wi-Fi on-off toggles. They operate similar to how they do on iPhone's control center. Next is airplane mode. This turns off all of the radio transmitters on your Apple Watch, similar to how it works on your iPhone. Then you have a little button with a picture of an iPhone emitting audio waves. This button will ping your iPhone for you and make it emit a tone to help you find it. And if you press and hold the button, it will make the iPhone's light flash. Then we have the flashlight. It turns the Apple Watch screen white, and when you turn it away from you, it increases the screen brightness to make it even brighter. I find this really useful, especially before bedtime. There's also some other options when the flashlight is open that you can scroll through when you swipe left. There's an option to make the screen blink or even turn red instead of white. Then you have the Do Not Disturb toggle, which operates the same as on iPhone. Then we have the Theater Mode toggle. Theater Mode turns on Silent Mode and the screen stays dark unless you tap it or press a button. Next we have the Silent Mode toggle that mutes any audio to keep your Apple Watch quiet. And then we have the Connect an Audio device that allows you to connect Bluetooth speakers, headphones, and any other compatible Bluetooth accessory. If you have the Apple Watch Series 2 or 3 that are water resistant, you also have the water lock option. Use the water lock to prevent accidental taps while swimming, as this option locks the watch and makes you rotate the digital crown to unlock the watch and blast any water out of the speaker port that may still be present. Now let's move over to the Apple Watch settings. You can control many of the watch's settings from the iPhone's watch app, but there are a few things that can only be set directly on the watch. So I'll go on a brief overview of both and highlight what I think are some of the more important options. First, let's go through the settings app on the Apple Watch. The first option is the time menu. In this menu, the Apple Watch gives you the option to set the time on your Apple Watch ahead if you so desire. As some people like to set their watch a few minutes faster than the actual time to help them be on time or what have you. If you're one of those people, you can set that here. Next we have the airplane mode toggle. I'm not sure why they decided to put that in settings as it's already in the control center, but this is the second place to access that control. Then we have the Bluetooth menu. This looks a bit deeper than the one from control center, but essentially does the same thing. Then we have the do not disturb menu that contains the toggle in control center and shows you the schedule if one is set up on your iPhone. Then we have the general menu. There are many preferences in the general menu, but I'll go over some of the highlights. The watch orientation setting is located in this menu. That lets you pick which wrist you wear the Apple Watch on. There's also the particulars for the screen wake settings, the nightstand mode toggle, accessibility options, and even some particulars for the workout app. I would recommend looking through this menu at least once at some point, as there are some settings that can really personalize your Apple Watch experience in this menu. The last option in the general settings menu is a reset button. Remember to avoid this button unless you're looking at resetting your Apple Watch from scratch. Back to the main level of the settings app, you have the sound and haptic settings that let you set the watch alert volume, the haptic strength, and whether or not Mickey and Minnie Mouse speak the time on touch. Now this option tends to freak some people out and would rather them not speak. And finally, the passcode menu where you can set up the security preferences of your Apple Watch. What I'd like to point out is unlock with iPhone. I like this option because it will unlock your Apple Watch if you're wearing it the next time you unlock your iPhone, so you won't have to type in the passcode as often. You can access the majority of these options and more from the Watch app on your iPhone in the My Watch tab with even deeper control over things like what third-party complications are available to choose, the app layout for grid mode, the particulars of the watch's dock as discussed before, and a slightly more detailed general menu, brightness and tech size, sounds and haptics, passcode settings, and privacy menus. These are definitely worth your time to check out at least once so you can fine tune the functionality of your Apple Watch to your exact needs. 
As I said earlier, this is part 3 of 4 of my Apple Watch user guide and tutorial. Check out part 4 where I briefly talk about useful built-in watch apps, how to get third-party watch apps with some app recommendations, and answer some popular miscellaneous Apple Watch questions. I would also recommend checking out the other three parts as well if you haven't already. In part 1, we talk about the basics of how to use the Apple Watch and explain how you run apps, complications, and set up your Apple Watch dock. And in part 2, we talk about how to customize the Apple Watch face, choose your desired complications, and personalize the color scheme of your Apple Watch. I'll leave links in the description below so you can check those out. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos, every week. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one!